Bush Memorial Stadium in St. Louis. It's the seventh game of the 1968 World Series. St. Louis Cardinals with three victories, the Detroit Tigers with three victories. And the winner this afternoon takes the World Championship. The weather is clear and very pleasant. The temperature about 60 degrees. There's almost no wind here in St. Louis. And we're going to see two two-game winners pitted against each other this afternoon in game number seven. The fabulous Bob Gibson, who won 22 and lost nine over the regular National League season, two and all in the series, and the left-hander of Detroit, Mickey Lolich. He won 17 and nine in the American League season. He has two victories and no defeat in the World Series. Well, Mr. Reese, this is it, and uh, we've got a very interesting situation here. Well, the Tiger left-hander, Mickey Lolich, only two days rest. Do you think that maybe they'll uh, check him as he warms up and see if somebody else might be ready right behind him? Well, it could be. I mean, uh, Mickey Lowell having only two days rest. I'm watching him throw in the bullpen. Hal Narragon works with Johnny Singh as a pitching coach. And I'm sure that uh, when they come in, that Narragon will tell Mayo Smith how did Mickey Lowell throw while he was warming up. If he did not throw well... It wouldn't be too surprising to me, to, as soon as this game starts, that Johnny Sane, the pitching coach, down in that bullpen for the Tigers, may have someone start warming up as this game starts. This has been done before. And a lot of times, Ernie, that uh, the fellow will have his stuff in the bullpen down there and go on that mound and all of a sudden lose it. That's right, and uh, sometimes it'll work the opposite, too, won't it? That he won't have anything and then he'll uh, sort of get it as he goes along? Well, I'm sure that uh, this has happened quite a few times. And Lowledge, if he doesn't have it down there, I'm uh, sure he'll be looking for it on the mound that first inning. Of course, Bob Gibson, he always seems to have it. And he looks pretty sharp throwing in the bullpen down there now. And the pitching coach, Billy Muppet, is not letting anyone warming up, warm him up except himself. Not a catcher, Billy Muppet, the pitching coach for the Cardinals, warming up Bob Gibson. Now we'll give you the starting lineup for the two teams, the Tigers are pretty much going with their regular starting lineup. The Cardinals have made a change or two, mainly because of the left-hand pitcher, Lolich, in there for Detroit. So here are the batting orders, beginning with the visiting team, the America League champion Detroit Tigers. The leadoff man will be Dick McAuliffe, the second baseman. That's McAuliffe at second base. Batting number two is Mickey Stanley. Stanley batting second and playing at shortstop. Al Kaline, so far the hero for the Tigers from a batting standpoint in the World Series. Batting number three, and he's stationed at right field. For the cleanup hitter for Detroit, the first baseman, Norman Cash. That's Cash at first base, batting number four. For the fifth batter is the left fielder, Willie Horton. Horton in left. Then it's Jim Northrup, the center fielder. Northrup in center. He's followed by Tiger catcher, and number seven batter, Bill Freehand. Freehand the catcher. Don Wirt, that's number eight, and he is at third base. It's Wirt at third. The number nine batter and the Tiger pitcher is Mickey Lowland. Now on the public address here at Bush Memorial Stadium, uh, the Tigers, led by manager Mayo Smith, are being introduced. Here's the St. Louis Cardinal lineup. The world champion will lead off with Lou Brock, their left fielder. That's Brock in left. Odeon Javier, the number two batter, one of the leading hitters of the 391 average. He's been moved up to number two. He's playing second base. Well, the third hitter is Kurt Flood. Flood in center field. Then it's Orlando Cepeda batting clean up and playing first base. The number five batter for the Cardinals, third baseman Mike Shannon. That's Shannon at third. Batting sixth and catching Tim McCarver. McCarver catching. Roger Maris, despite the left-hand pitcher, is in there at right field. He's batting number seven. Maris in right. Dal Maxwell is the shortstop and the number eight hitter. And on the mound, the big, the hard-throwing right-hander, Bob Gibson. Gibson is batting number nine. Ernie Horwell and Timmy Reed. The seventh game of the World Series, 1968 in St. Louis. The ovation is for Bob Gibson, the great Cardinal pitcher, going to the mound now, ready to begin his duties here in this crucial game. Now, the umpires for the seventh game, it'll be Tom Gorman of the National League behind the plate. Jim Honachick is at first base. He represents the American League. 
National League representative Stan Landis is out behind second. At third base, Bill Kenneman of the American League. And down the line, Doug Harvey is in left field. He represents the National League. And down the line in right, Bill Haller from the American League. Each of these two pitchers, Bob Gibson and Nick Yolovich, has won two games. Each gunning for the third victory in the series. And if Gibson can do it, he'll be the first in uh, World Series history to do it twice. Beautiful baseball day. It's uh, very pleasant, almost no breeze at all. Bright, sunny afternoon in St. Louis. And Dick McCollum will lead off for Detroit. The Cardinals will have Shannon at third, Maxwell at short, Javier at second, Cepeda at first. In the outfield, it's Brock in left, Blood in center, Maris in right, McCarver the catcher, and Gibson now getting ready to go to work. The left hand batting McCullough, stepping in a 261 batting average for Richards. And here's the windup and the first pitch of the game. It's a strike on the outside corner. Gibson batting right there, Pee Wee, going to the outside corner. Yes, he has. That's a, that is it, and he can do this with the best of them. Here's the windup and the pitch to McCauley. Play on and miss. Strike two. McCauley has one home run in the series. He's knocked in three runs. The outfield is deep to right. The strike two delivered to McCauley. High fastball, one ball, two strikes. Bob Gibson ready to go. The windup, the pitch to McCullough. It's outside. The count is two two. in the ball game. McAuliffe waiting on a 2-2 delivery from Gibson. He stops in the middle of his motion. Time called by Tom Gorman to the home plate. McAuliffe trying to dig himself in there. Leans in to wait on the 2-2 delivery. Here it comes. He takes the ball. Oh. 3-2. Oh, McAuliffe has taken Gibson to the full count here in the leadoff spot. Gibson ready, winds, kicks, delivers. Here's a fly ball. Hits off a of first base, a foul. Cepeda near the seat. Might have a chance. He's right there, reaches in, makes the catch. Well, he didn't have much room, Pee Wee. No, he did. In fact, he caught that ball in those temporary seats down out in front of, uh, right out in front of first base. He reached in about two feet and got it. Here's Mickey Stanley, the Detroit shortstop. Young man from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Under tremendous pressure in this series, moving to a new position where he's played very well. He's batting 208. Right hand about his swings and misses on a fastball. Let her high. One strike on Stanley. Center field is flat a little bit to right center on Mickey Stanley. No score for his inning. Here's a line drive to Gibson for the out. Reflexes, Mr. Reese. Well, he's a great athlete, Ernie. And you'll notice today, if there's anyone you'll very seldom ever see anyone run on him, of course, the squad is not a bunting ball club, but he feels that position just like an infielder. That ball is hit just like a shot. He just reached out and picked it off like a cherry. Here is Al Kaline batting 440 in the series, and he takes the ball in close. Each of these gentlemen has great respect for the other one. Gibson, the pitcher, K-line, the batter. No score, first inning. Two out, nobody on. Now the windup by Bob Gibson. The pitch is swung on and hit high and foul off a third. It may be out of play. Yep, it will be. Shannon comes over, but it's in the seat. K-line has uh, eight RBIs and two home runs. His 11 hits uh, leads the Tiger team. Waits down a 1-1 delivery from Gibson. 
It's Mo Ball 2. Two and one. Outfield is almost straight away. The infield is deep. Javier pulled to his uh, right at a deep second base. Over a little bit nearer the bag. The wind up by Gibson, the 2 1 delivery. Ball outside. Fastball low and away. We're just underway in St. Louis, game number seven. It's the first inning. The Tigers have set two men up. Gibson has retired the two. Two down, nobody on. K line has worked Gibson to a 3 1 count. And the Cardinal right hander rocks and pitches. Swing and a foul out of play on the first base side. Norman Cash at the on-deck circle for Detroit. Gibson uh, looks him over, ready to go to work again. The full count pitch to K-Line. Struck him out. Curveball. Tad retired. One, two, three. And at the end of a half inning, Detroit nothing. The Cardinals coming to bat. Mr. Reese, uh, so far, Mr. Gibson uh, looking very sharp in that opening inning. Well, I would think so, and it's one thing about Bob Gibson. Anything he starts, at least he did in 1968, season, he finishes. He pitched 28 complete games and 34 starts and was not knocked out one time. Pretty tough, I would say. You know, kidding. <laughs> We look at the Tiger left hand of Mickey Lolich, who, uh, like Gibson, is seeking his third series win in the 1968 World Series, and he'll be facing the very fine leadoff man, Lou Brock. Brock has 12 hits. His batting average is 480. What a great series he's had. He's tied his own uh, stolen base record in this series with seven. Now leans in, left-handed batter, facing the Tiger left-handed Mickey Lonich. No score. We're just starting the last half of the first inning in St. Louis. He takes a curve outside. Ball one. Wirt is laying in close at third. Stanley is at shortstop, but caught up at second. Cash at first. The Detroit outfield, Horton in left, north of and center, K-line in right. The catcher is freehand, the pitcher Lolich. Uh, Mickey getting his sign from Bill Freehand, ready to go to work again. The 1-0 pitch to lead off man Brock, swung on and beaten foul. Off the plate and over toward the Cardinal bench. 1-1, one one, the count on him. Lolich with only two days rest, going to the mound for the Tigers. There's sometimes when he's... Uh, Fairly tired that his uh, fastball will sink a little bit more for him. Left hander ready to go to work. Now the wind up and the pitch. Brock swings the bounding ball to second. Big hop from McCauley. Go to Cash. He's out. One up and one away. William Javier, the batter now. He's had a fine series with the bat. A 391 average. Has knocked in three runs. John Gorman of the National League umpiring behind the bat. On a check, landed. Kinnaman on the bases. Doug Harvey down the right field line. Bill Heller down the right field line. This game is scoreless in St. Louis. It's the last half of the first inning. Lomich ready to go to work on the right hand batting Javier. He swings, there's a fly ball to center. Northrop is there, puts it away for the off. Two down and nobody on. And here is Kurt Flood, who has been batting number two in red changing batting order, moved to the number three spot. Flood's average is 2 5 0. Delivers. Here's a ball in close. He checked his swing. Blood, one time Cincinnati player, 11 years with the Cardinals. Leaning and waiting now. Two out, nobody on, no score. 
Here's a cut and a miss. One and one. Like most of the cards, he's appearing in his third World Series. Most of the Tigers have no World Series experience. Flood takes a slow one that breaks in close. Two and one, the count out him. Cepeda waiting on deck for the cards. The game scoreless. Neither team has uh, seen a runner yet. Now the motion by the left-hander Lodich. The pitch on the way. Taken for a ball. Him close. He started to go and held off. Lodich first joined the Detroit club in 63, coming up from Syracuse. Been a regular starter since then. Here's the wind-up, the pitch. Hung on. Drive into right still and may drop in. It does. He was on one hop by K-Line. And there is the first hit and the first runner of the game. Flood drops a single into right center. And the Cardinals have a man on. Well, we can kind of, kind of take a look. See what Red Sainz is going to do here. They have been a running ball club all year. Of course, Flood is not the base field of the Brock, yes. but he does have two stolen bases in this series. Let's see if they're going to run. The batter is Cepeda with a 280 batting mark of the series. Cash will hold on the bag over there with Flood. The outfield will uh, play deep and around the left a little bit. The infield back. Orlando Cepeda, right handed batting first baseman. Flood edging off at first base. Doesn't go. The pitch is swung on and beaten foul on a high hop down past the third base coach, Joe Schultz. Dick Sisler is the first base coach. The Cardinals. There are two out and one on. The game scoreless in the first inning. After Lovich retired to Brock and Javier. Flood single to right center. The Tigers in their first half of the first went down one, two, three before the slant of Gibson. Now the set by the left hand of Lovich. So look the first base. Blood draws it, throw, and gets back. He edges off again, uh, trying to test his lead. And Cepeda steps away from the plate. Now Orlando back in to face Lolich. The pitch is a ball low, fastball, one and one. Shannon will be the next Cardinal batter. We've got a scoreless tie in the first inning at Bush Memorial Stadium. Blood edging off again. The pitch. Swing and a miss on a high hard one. One ball, two strikes. That was the hardest that uh, Lolich has thrown so far. The pitch might have been out of the strike zone. With a count of one ball and two strikes on Cepeda, this may be a good spot for Flood to run right here. He's edging off, and the pitch fouled away. So the count is still one ball, two strikes. We're backing up and playing much deeper at third base now. Score first inning. The Cardinals have a man on and two outs. A flood so far not edging off at first base. The fader waiting at the plate on Lodich. Flood moves off a little bit. Doesn't go. The pitch is swung on a drive foul to deep left field. Hit the ball very hard, but he pulled it down the line in the corner. Two strikes on Orlando Cepeda. Mickey Lolich tugging his cap out there now. Still ahead of the other. And he sets himself to keep an eye on the runner at first base, Kurt Flood. Now the set by Mickey. The look over to first base. Flood edges off again. Doesn't go. The pitch he swung on is a long foul fly to the other field to right. Oh, 
I got a new supply of baseball for Mr. Gorman. <laughs> the paint is testing all directions here. Two home runs of this series and six RBIs. Nobody on either team has more than two homers. So the Cardinal fans here in their ballpark beginning their rhythmic applause. Blood edges off. The pitch is a curve low. 2-2. Two -two. That's the count. Two out. Man on first. No score. First inning. Ideal weather conditions in St. Louis today. The painter stands very deep in the batter's box, waiting on a 2-2 two -two delivery. It goes flood. The pitch is taken. The throw by freehand to second. Not in time. Stolen base. his third steal in three attempts and he made it rather easily. McAuliffe came over the cover. The throw was slightly high but the uh, flood was in there easily anyhow. So the Cardinals have a man in the scoring position in the first inning with two outs. Flood at second base. Single in the stolen base. The count is three and two on Orlando Cepeda. Here's the stretch by Lolich. And the pitch. It's a ball low. Two men out for the Cardinals after the walk. And Mike Shannon, who's been dangerous with a stick, especially in clutch situations, sets up. Ernie, it looks just a little bit like I was watching Lolich on his move to first base against Flood. And the first time the club decided he wanted to go, he took off. I don't believe Mickey has a real good move to first base, does he? No, he doesn't, really. Just the uh, fact that he's looking over there and he's left-handed is uh, about the most help he's got. Well, I've seen him in two games now. This is the third game, and I've never seen him make a real good move to first base. <laughs> Here's Shannon now, the right-handed batting third baseman waiting, and he takes a ball in close. A little bit on the low side, too. Two on, two out, no score. First inning, the Cardinals are threatening. Mike Shannon, a 280 batter for the series. Blooded second, the painter at first base. Both fair sized leads. The pitch, Shannon swings and misses. It's like a breaking ball down around the knee. Down the lines here, it's 3.30 from home plate to the corners. Straightaway center field, 414 feet. Up the power alleys and left and right center, 3.86. One and one, that's the count on Shannon. No score first inning. Two on, two out for the Cardinal. Here's the set by Lotus. The left-handed checks his runners. Now delivers. And Shannon swings. There's a drive to right field. K-line going over is there. He makes the catch to the side retire. And at the end of one inning... Of the Cardinals nothing, Detroit nothing. It's along with Ernie Harwell at Bush Stadium. A beautiful day here in St. Louis. Couldn't have a nicer day for a ball game. Bob Gibson against Mo Mickey Lolich both have two wins. In the first inning, the Tigers, one down in order. McAuliffe, Stanley, and K-Line. Lolich had a little trouble getting the Cardinals out after Brock and... Javier one out, blood single, Cepeda walk, then Shannon hit a line driver in the right field. We're ready to go in the top half of the second inning. The first hitter, Norm Cash, tell you all about it. Ernie Harwell. Thank you, Pee Wee. Cash batting 409 uh, for the series. He has nine hits. Gibson ready to go. The right hander delivers. It's a ball outside to Norm Cash. Gibson, the only pitcher in series history who has won the deciding seventh game in two different series in 64 and 67. There's a foul ball back a third out of play. One and one, that's the count on Cash. The history of Norman Cash throughout most of his uh, Tiger seasons has been that he's hit very badly in the opening half and very well in the second half. There's a foul back of the plate. In towards the press box area and down below it. One and two, the count on Cash. Cash has one home run in this series.
Houston, who has won seven series games in a row, goes into action again. The one-two pitch. Swing, there's a fly ball to right center, not very deep. Maris and Flood converging on it. Maris is there to his glove for the out. So the first four Tigers have gone down in order. They've not hit a ball on the ground yet. Here's Willie Horton, who has a 263 series batting record. Horton has a home run. He hit it here in uh, St. Louis. Gibson delivers, and he backs him up with a fastball. Well, the Tigers have not had a runner yet. The game is scoreless. Inning number two in St. Louis. Seventh game of the World Series. Now the windup by Gibson. The pitch, fastball, fouled out of play. 1-1, one, one, that's the count on Hort. At the, here's the wind-up, the pitch to Willie Horton. Strike ball on the inside corner. One ball, two strikes. The Cardinals have been involved in six previous seven-game series and won all six. The pitch, it's the ball. He tried for the far corner and didn't get it. Infield deep on Horton, the outfield also back. One out of the base is empty. Gibson ready to go to action. The wind up, the pitch. Swing and a foul. Over the screen and out of play. Right down below it. Behind the play. 2-2 two, two on Willie Horton. Gibson is a youngster, almost died of pneumonia. And, uh, rheumatic fever, asthma, and a real tough time. Here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled off, right down below it. No score, second inning. The Tigers at bat. They've got the bases empty, and there's one away. Gibson ready to go to work again. Horton waiting at the plate, the 2-2 pitch. Struck him out. Swinging on a curve, he tried to hold up. The pitch was in a little bit, and he fanned. That's the second strikeout for Gibson. Ernie, I'm sure that Gibson did not want to throw that pitch there, but he got away with it. Then the carver had moved outside. He looked like he wanted that curveball to try to break outside. He got it inside, just got the inside corner. And Harden is so close to that plate, it fouled him up. Here's Northrop batting now, and he takes a high one for ball. Jim Northrop hitting 208. He featured the 10 run inning here yesterday with a Grand Slam home run. He has two homers for the series. Left hand batter takes a high one, 2 and 0 oh, to count on Northrop. Gibson has set down the first five Tigers. Two of them on strike. One fly ball, one line drive to Gibson himself, and a foul to Cepeda for the other one. No ground balls yet. Northrop looks at a strike. Above the knees, inside corner. The wind up, the pitch. Foul out of play. Two two to the count on North. Second inning, Detroit at bat. They've got the bases empty and two down. Bob Gibson, gunning for his third series victory, winds and pitches, and it's a check swing for a ball, 3-2. That was a breaking pitch in close. Northrop started and held off. deep to right on Northrop, the infield back. Now the full count pitch. He swings and strikes out. And at the end of an inning and a half, Detroit nothing, St. Louis nothing. About a half the second inning. Amy Reese along with Ernie Harwell. And Gibson has looked sharp in his two innings. 
He has struck out three. Has not without a base runner. We're going to the bottom half of the second inning. Nicky always had a, had a little bit of trouble in the first inning after getting two men out. Flood got a base hit. Cepeda walked. And Shannon hit a ball hard. Out in the right field. Let's see what he's going to do this inning. Tim McCarver, Roger Maris, and Dal Maxwell. Ernie Harwell. Well, McCarver batting 3-3-3, and incidentally, uh, those three strikeouts uh, by Gibson all on 3-2 uh, pitches and all on breaking ball. No score. We're in the second inning. Tim McCarver. Memphis, Tennessee, facing Mickey Lulich. There's a foul ball hit on the ground out of play. Oh, it's on the first base side. Mickey Lovich, native of Portland, Oregon, Croatian descent. One time clubhouse boy out there in the uh, Portland clubhouse. Strike one pitch to McCarver. He ducks away from a high hard one. One and one to count on 10. McCarver has uh, two triples in this series and one home run. He's knocked in four runs. Sounds not quite as bright as it was when the game started. Sort of a haze hanging over this uh, beautiful ballpark now. Here's a pitch. Swing and a miss on a fastball. About leather high and in close. One ball, two strikes. Third World Series for McCarver. Uh, leading off for the St. Louis Cardinals here in the scoreless tie in the second. Here's the motion, the pitch by Lonich. Fouled out of play. Back of the screen. One and two the count. Well, one of those more neck outfielders made a good catch of that one, I guess. The man from Clayton, Missouri. Checking his sign, ready to go again now. Nobody on, nobody out. No score. Here's the pitch. McCarver takes the ball. High, 2-2. Two, two. Clayton, Missouri. Yes, sir. That's right near here. <laughs> versus McCarver in this situation. Here's the windup by Mickey, and the pitch on the way. Foul, it'll be out of play. That one back of the plate in the lower deck. Well, the Tigers have won the last two games to make a real World Series out of this one. It looks dismal for their side until the Monday game. They came from behind to win that one and then won the game yesterday. But they're power hitting. Tie the series. Here's the 2-2 pitch. It's a ball low. Tipping one, but McCarver held off. Full count. McCarver is supposed to hit left-handers about as well as he hits right-handers. He hits them off the left field quite a bit. As we notice, Willie Hart is playing him a little bit toward that left field end. Almost like a right-handed punitive. Well, let's see what Lovitch gives him now on the full count delivery. Score in the second inning. Here's the pitch. Walk him. High and away with a fastball. That is the second walk off over. We'll have a conference on the mound. Freehand and Lolich talking over the situation, and here is Roger Maris. He told uh, Timmy Reese in his three-game interview that he'd been with three winners and three losers in World Series competition. And this is the rubber World Series and his final appearance in a baseball uniform right here today. Left-hander against the left-hander. Man on first, McCarver. There's no score. The Cardinals are batting in the second. Word is about even with the back at third base. Sam and McCall up a step or so around second. There's a ball outside. Maris uh, told uh, Pee Wee that he so far had had not too much success against Lotus. Didn't he, Pee Wee, in his uh, 
regular season career in the American League. Oh, that's right. And he also said that this was the first time that he had hit against a left-hander all year and not even in batting practice and did not let, have too much luck against Lowe. He swings and fouls it off on the screen. Wharton is uh, pulling a little close in left field. Center field to Northrop is uh, slightly over to right. Talking about Roger Maris retiring after today's game. So with another great ball player by the name of Eddie Matthews of the Tigers. This is his last game. And Eddie's been a big help to the Tigers this year. He's the fellow that they all look up to. Here's the 1-1 pitch coming up. Maris pops it up. Foul ball between home and first near the Cardinal dugout. Might be out of play. Cash comes over. He can't get it. On the roof of the dugout. Well, Norman went into that dugout, but the ball was unavailable. It hit the roof. And we lost cash, or he went right in, into the Cardinal dugout. No score. We're in the second inning. The Cardinals at bat. They've got a man on McCarver at first base. Nobody out of the count. Ball one, two strikes on Roger Barrett. Carver uh, getting a little bit of a lead, not much though, with their first base. Cash is holding on the bag with him. Maris waits the pitch. Swung on is a bounding ball to Stanley Touchy's second on the short hop. Throws to first base. It's a double play. Apparently, uh, McCarver thought that Stanley had caught the ball in the air. He went back to first base, but the play went Stanley unassisted at second for the force out of McCarver, and then he fired over to first base when Cash to get uh, Roger Maris for the double play. Ernie, this Mickey Stanley keeps making good plays. He's done a wonderful job at shortstop. I understand that Mr. Mayo Smith does not intend to play him at shortstop next year. Put him back out in center field. He's looked mighty good there. He may make Mayo change his mind. Here's Dow Maxwell now looking for his first World Series hit. He's 0 for 20. No score, second inning. There are two out and nobody on. There's a bounding ball hit towards short, cut off by third baseman Wirt. Throw to cash, he's out. Side retired, and at the end of two, the Cardinals nothing, the Tigers nothing. Freehand leading off for the short in the third, and he takes the ball wide. A curveball low and away from right-handed Bob Gibson. Freehand has one hit. He picked it up yesterday, one for 20 in the World Series competition. The game is scoreless. Third inning, Detroit at bat. Strike on the outside corner. Curve, cop that corner for Gibson to count as even. One and one on freehand. Gibson is fanned to three. Struck out the last two minutes face. There's a drive to center field. Flood is there waiting. Makes the catch for the out. The ball hit rather well, but right to the glove of the center field is flood. The Tigers do not have a hit yet. They have not yet hit a ball on the ground off Gibson. Here is Don Wirtz, the third baseman with an average of 071. He has one hit in 14 trips. The Tigers have had very little firepower in their bottom three uh, men in the batting order. Freehand and Wirtz have two hits between them for the whole series. And then you get to the pitcher. There's a strike call. Gibson uh, fed word a fastball to start him off. The game is scoreless in the third in St. Louis. Uh, Bob Gibson kicks and deals. Here's a strike on the outside corner. Work started to go. Held off. It got the strike zone anyhow. And the Cardinal right-hander looks for his sign. The strike two pitch to work. Took him out. The fourth strikeout for Gibson. That will be the pitcher, Mickey Lomich. Well, the first eight Detroiters have gone down in a row. Lomich uh, hit a home run in this ballpark in the second game of the World Series, the only home run he's ever hit in his professional career. He takes the strike from Gibson. Lomich has three hits and eight turns at bat of the series. Gibson winds to the bit. It's a cut in the mix on a fastball. Give me just blazing it by. Somebody asked Mickey, said you've been hitting pretty good in this series besides pitching. And Mickey said, well, I may have luck against Gibson with his control. He may hit my bat. 
But he did it. Five strikeouts for Gibson. And at the end of two and one half innings. Bob Gibson has 32 strikeouts now for the series, breaking his own record of 31, setting 64. And the great ovation was for Gibson himself as he steps to the plate to face Mickey Lovett. And he takes the ball in close, Mickey Turbin. Lovett has allowed uh, one hit and walked two. The game is scoreless in the third in St. Louis. A ball, oh, to the pitcher Gibson, 2 0. Gibson with one hit, a home run in five sets. Now the motion and the pitch. Strike inside corner fastball, 2 and 1. Gibson, a right-hand batter. Waiting now on the left-hander, Lolich, his next delivery. The pitch. Swing and a foul back at the plate. 2-2. Two -two. So far, neither team able to break through the scoreless barrier. No score, third inning. On the windup, the 2-2 pitch to Gibson. Tapper hit toward short, cut off by third baseman Wirt. Throw to Cash, he got him. And there's one up and one away for the Cardinals in their third. Here comes the leadoff man, Lou Brock. Brock was 12 hits for the series. First time up, he bounced out to the second baseman, McCullough. Short has no runs, no hits, no errors. St. Louis, no runs, one hit, and no errors. Oh, the battle has moved into the last half, the third. Here's the windup and the pitch. He takes a strike on the outside corner. Brock batting 480. No one has ever hit higher than 500 in the World Series that has lasted uh, more than four games. Bombing ball hit to the second base. To the glove side goes McCullough. Throws him out over to Cash. And there are two down in the St. Louis third. Well, these two teams are quite a contrast the way they've gone out so far. The Cardinals hit the ball on the ground most of the time. And the Tigers have not hit a ground ball yet. Now it's Gibson. Here is Julian Javier who uh, hit a fly ball on the first pitch to him in the first inning. He fly to north of the Tigers center fielder. The game is scoreless. The cards at bat with two out. Nobody on. It's the last half of the third inning. Javier batting uh, number two in the Red Chain Dean's batting order. Swings at the topper on a big hop to work. The throw to cash. It's an easy third out. And the side retired one, two, three. At the end of three, Detroit subbing, St. Louis subbing. Three innings of game number seven in the World Series. Neither team able to score. The Cardinals have the games only hit a single by flood with two out of the first inning. Now Dick McCullough will lead off for the Tigers in the fourth against Gibson, and I'll pleasure to tune in on Pee Wee Reese. Thank you, Ernie. It's been all Bob Gibson so far. Nicky Lowell's had a little trouble in the first inning, but he has settled down. So I will never see a score in this ball game the way these two fellows look right now. Dick McCullough leading things off the Tigers. Bob Gibson, the kick. There's a ball hit pretty hard out in the right field. Roger Maris should have no trouble with it. Back underneath it and takes it for out number one. So Gibson, in three and a third inning, he has struck out five. There has not been a ball hit on the ground. Maris has had two fly balls out in right field. Court flood, one in center field, and Zapato won its first base. Mickey Stanley back to wave the pitch. The fastball in there. Ball strike one. I 
think that Gibson never does use the middle part of his place. He just uses the inside three inches and the outside three inches. What control? Ball foul straight back, back to on him. Tigers, no runs on no hits. No errors. The Cardinals, no runs on one hit and no errors. We're in the top half, the fourth thing it's one away, Mickey Stanley. Hit a line drive. Hit a line drive his first time up right back at Bob Gibson. That ball, on outside, ball one. Gibson trying to get him to go for that high outside pitch with two strikes on him. One ball and two strikes on Stanley. The seventh and deciding game of the 68 World Series. Gibson against Lolich. Curveball on the ground out to Maxwell. Starts up. He'll have to hurry. He can't. Has no chance. Well, he got deep on it, and then he came up ready to throw, and he couldn't let the ball go. Big Stanley would have beaten it anyway, and uh, Maxwell uh, saved a possible overthrow had he uh, let the ball go. So it will be scored as a single, the first hit off Gibson. So the Tigers have their first base runner. Al Kaline is the hitter. The first pitch to him is a fastball just missed, a little outside. Gibson wanted that one. Kaline checking with Tony Cuccinello at third, his coach. At first base is Wally Moses. Kaline can handle the bat, and Mickey Stanley at first can run. He led the Tigers in stolen bases. A swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. And again, Kaline checks with Cuccinello. He gives the signs down at third to the belt, to the cap. Backs up in that coach's box. They're playing Kaline straight away. Stanley with a short lead at first base. Gibson has a good move over there. Fastball. Little outside. Ball two. Kaline's the kind of hitter who against Gibson, he might just try to go to right. The only trouble with having a hit and run with a fellow like Gibson, you miss too many pitches. That's right. Two balls, one strike. Gibson looks over at Stanley. Curveball into the dirt of Spider. Gets the carver on the hand. Is it foul tip? Yeah. Yep, the carver's doing shaking his hand. Count is two and two. Looks like that ball was low into the dirt. On the way, two and two on out. K-line. Stanley at first base. Gibson set. Looks over at Stanley. Takes a little time. Here's the pitch. The lazy loop at Cepeda's first base going over here at the stands. Can he get to it? Not this one. And the count remains two and two. And the Tigers trying to come back to win the seventh game here, winning the seventh game after trailing three games to one. To be the first team to do that since the 1958 series. The Yankees did it against the Braves. Two balls, two strikes on Al Kaline. One away. When the top half the fourth thing, no score in this ball game. That ball. How are you looking? Well, there you can see the top of pitcher Gibson in. Third ball. Slider to Al Kaline. And then he came with that real good fastball just on the outside corner, and Al did not even make an offer at it. So that's the sixth strikeout for Bob Gibson. Brings up Norm Cash. Stanley still on at first. Cepeda holding close. Javier back it on the grass at second base. Gibson, the kick. There's the ball hit hard, but it's foul. And Cash, who has tremendous power, he got out in front of that one. Hit it way in the upper deck down that right field line, but it was fouled by quite a few feet. One strike on him. McCarver giving the sign. Gibson set. Here's the kick and the pitch. And he swings and misses. Strike two. Gibson in the first game struck out 17 men. to set a record. He has nothing but record. On his first base, Mickey Stanley. Two strikes on Mom Cash, it's two away. 
Gibson takes a little bit more time than usual. Cash backed out of there. Tom Gorman, the umpire, behind home plate. He's from the National League. Two strikes on Mom Cash. Here is the pitch. Way outside. Ball one. I told you, Stanley at first base. A good base runner. One ball, two strikes on Mom Cash. Here's the pitch. Her ball high and outside makes the count two and two. Each club has one hit. One by Stanley. The Tigers in one of the foot of the Cardinals. Here's the two and two pitch. A ground ball out to the shortstop, but Shannon cuts over in the front of him and takes it and over to Cepeda, and that's off for Norm Keck. And that's off for Tigers in the top half of the fourth inning. So after three and a half innings, a play. Detroit nothing and the Cardinals nothing. Cardinals coming to bat on the fourth inning. The game is short. It's 18 no runs and one hit. The Cardinals uh, had a threat going at the opening inning on a two-out single by Flood. So second to pay to walk. They couldn't score. Walked to McCarver, let off the second. He was a race for the double play. The Tigers have only one hit and one runner. Stanley, a single in the fourth. Now back to Pee Wee. Okay, Ernie. First Flood leading things off. The Cardinals here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Mickey Lowley. First pitch is outside. Ball one. First Flood got a base hit. In the first inning with two men out, he stole second. Then Cepeda walked, but they got standing out on the line drive up the right field. That ball a little bit too high, ball two. Today's attendance, 54,692. A beautiful day for a ball game here at Bush Stadium. In St. Louis, the seventh and final game of the World Series. There's a ball hit out from the right field, that ball. Went to the opposite field with kind of two balls and no strikes on him, just missing down that right field line. Let's give the umpires. Behind home plate, Tom Gomer of the National League. Honor check to the National League at first base. Landis of the National League at second base. Kinnaman, the American League at third base. Down that left field line, Harvey of the National League. The right field line, Haller of the American League. Down the right field line. Two balls, one strike on Kurt Flood. Ball hit hard. Stanley on a shot off. He'll have to hurry. He got him. Well, that play showed that Stanley's quick reflexes and the way he's been able to adapt to himself at shortstop. He got the ball on the short hop but couldn't hold it. Bobbled it momentarily and recovered it even in time to get the fleet shot. You think they all may play him at shortstop? <laughs> they just got to <laughs> Shot up. He fumbled the ball, but right out in front of him, and he grabbed on it. And the good arm that he has, Flood can go, but he threw him out. Cepeda's so a hitter. Ball hit hard, but it's going to foul down the right field line. It's one out. We're in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Got our information. The first series winner. He's got $1,182. There's a ground ball out to Don Ward. He knocks the ball down. He'll have to hurry to get Cepeda. Over to Norm Cash, and he got him. Oh, there's two plays. One with a shortstop, Stanley. Double the ball. Threw out Flood. Don Ward. Juggled the ball. Picked it up. And threw out Cepeda. Those Baltimore balls were hit hard. Quick recoveries by both of those fellas. Talking about that first series when it's getting $1,182, and the loser's share was $200. What a difference, Ernie. Yes, sir. Mike Shannon takes the first pitch. It's in there. Curveball, strike one. Quickly, Lola gets two down here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. One strike on Shannon. And that pitch is foul back. Strike two. Like this lower just settled it down to do a little pitching. That 
to the first inning. He has faced three, six, eight men. That is all. Struck him out on a high fastball. So that's all for 10, and that's all for the Cardinals here in the bottom half, the fourth inning. We're after four full innings. The Tigers nothing, the Cardinals nothing. Ernie Harwell, along with Jimmy Reese, Bush Memorial Stadium in St. Louis, the seventh game of the World Series, scoreless, each team, no runs, one hit, no errors, as Gibson and Lovich developing into a great pitching deal here in St. Louis. Kirk Flood, as the St. Louis hit a single with two out of the first inning, Mickey Stanley had a single with one out of the fourth for the Tigers only in. Willie Horton, the batter, the announcer, Pee Wee Reese. Thank you, Ernie. Yes, sir. What a pitcher's deal between Bob Gibson and Mickey Lola's Willie Horton starts, checks his swing. It's high and inside, ball one. Horton, the first time up, struck out. For the second strikeout for Bob Gibson, he has six in this game. The pump by Gibson. Curveball, a little high, ball two. The fellow has, with one swing, can put the Tigers out in front. He had 36 homers in 68. Tremendous fire. The 2-0 and pitch. Curveball, inside, ball three. Checking the Tony Cuccinello down at third base. Where they let him hit this 3 0 pitch. With his thigh, you never can tell. Here it is the kick. Fastball just got that outside corner. Strike one. Three balls, one strike on Woody Hart. He's letting things off the Tigers here in the top half of the fifth inning. No score in this ball game. One hit for the Tigers, one hit for the Cardinals. Gibson pitches. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Well, you can see what kind of pitcher Gibson is. Three balls. No strikes on Harton. Gibson hits that outside corner on the next two pitches. Three and two is the count on Willie Harton. No one away. Gibson, one, kick. Here's the pitch. Ball is popped up. Cepeda over at first base, but Javier says, I'll take it in front of Cepeda. And there's one out. Gibson has not walked the man. Jim Northup. He's all for one. He was a strikeout victim in the second inning. He has had two home runs in this series. The one yesterday with the bases loaded. He had 21 homers for the Tigers this year. One ball, no strike on him. Gibson, checking with McCarver. Here is the pitch. It's popped up down the left field line. Maxwell going over. Shannon going over. Can he get to it? Shannon Nice running catch down that left field. Allen to retire Jim Northup. So it's two away, and that brings up Bill Free. And McCarver wants to go out and talk to Bob. Mr. Gibson said, Yes, sir, I understand. Now then, they're ready. Freehan got his first hit in the series yesterday. He is now one for 21. He flied out to Kurt Flood in his, his first time up today. Gibson, pitch. Foul straight back, strike one. The paint is first, Javier at second, Maxwell at short, Shannon at third, Bach and left, right in center. Mass in right field, McCarver doing the catching, and Bob Gibson on the mound. The wind up, the kick. Ball hit hard out in the left field. Lou Bach going back on the warning track underneath it and takes it. Ball for freehand, and that's all for the Tigers here in the top half of the fifth inning. So after four and a half innings of play, it's still Detroit, nothing, and the Cardinals, nothing. Well, it's off score, and it uh, keeps rolling along this way. No runs, one hit, no errors on each side. Lolich, uh, tuning up now, ready to face the 
Cardinals in the fifth inning. It'll be McCarver, Maris, Maxwell, the first three scheduled batters against him. Well, the Cardinals had a threat going in the opening inning after Lowish retired the first two. Flood single stole second to free to walk, but Cannon was retired on a fly ball to right. And McCarver walked to start the second with the race in a double play. Everybody since then hit ground balls until Shannon struck out in the fourth inning. The Tigers have had only one runner. Now that was Stanley who had an infield hit. He shot stop Maxwell in the fourth inning with one out and he was left at first base. So the pitchers have dominated this seventh game so far and it remains a scoreless tie going into the last half of inning number five. Defensively for the Tigers. Matt Cash at first base. McAuliffe at second. Stanley at short, Wood at third, Horton in left, Nossip in center, Al Kayla in right, Bill Freehand doing the catching, and on the mound, Mickey Lowick. First pitch to McCarver. That ball inside. And Tim walked his first time up today. Lowick has walked two. But he was quickly erased as Roger Maris hit a line drive. As Stanley took on a shot up, stepped on second and fired the first for the double play. The one and all pitch. He went around on a curveball. He was looking for the fastball there. But Lowley came with a curveball. Makes the count. One ball and one strike on Tim McCarver. Lowley has now shut out the Cardinals 12 innings in a row. And Gibson has blanked the Tigers 10 innings in a row. These fellas are doing some kind of pitching. Ball hit hard. Stanley. By Stanley. Out in left field. Willie Harden up with the ball. McCarver makes the turn at first. Now Gibson has got a to McCarver, especially against the left hander, hits a lot of balls in the left field. And he sliced that ball off. It hit out in front of Stanley. And stayed down on the ground. He could not come up with the ball. It was a real tough chance. It's a base hit for McCarver, and the hitter is Roger Maris. Slowly, first pitch to him. And Maris hits it hard down at first baseline and bounce. On deck circle, Dow Maxwell. Kidding, Dow. Before the, today's game, you know, he came into this game 0 for 20. But he has hit the ball hard. He says, see, we, today is the day. One strike on Roger Maris. And Carver on his first. Clean and miss, strike two. We're in the bottom half of the fifth inning. The Tigers have one hit. Off Gibson, Mickey Stanley. Got it. The Cardinals have two hits. One by Flood and one by Tim McCarver. On the first base right now. Two strikes on Roger Mann. Rolling. Let's go with McCarver. Here's the pitch. Breaking pitch. All right. Ball one. Maris came into this game. Three for 16. Two strikes. Lowe's looks over at McCarver's first base. Here's the pitch. Oh, check it out. Dow Maxwell coming into the batter's box. Free and out and talk to Mickey Lowe's. Talking to Maris before the game. He said he had a little trouble with Lowe's. Ask him how he fixed him. He said he gives me that curve on the outside and then runs that sinker in on me. Well, right there was a breaking pitch. Out away from Rogers. May not have been a strike, but he's one part. And that's the second strikeout for Mickey Lowley. Dow Maxwell, first pitch to him. High and outside, ball one. Bob Gibson in the on deck circle. At first base, coaching for the Cardinals, Dick Sittler. At third base, Joe Schultz. One away. Lowly. Ten. Looks over at McCarver. There's a kick and they go for McCarver. The ball is popped up, though. Better hurry back. Ron Tess. Underneath it in foul territory. And he throws the ball to McCarver. 
covering his first, and McCarver had to slide back in there. Well, they had McCarver going. when he steps in there. Here's the hitter. It's two away. The Carver started descending off of the base hit. Holy struck out there. And Maxwell popped up. Bob gets in there right now. McCarver still at first. Here's the pitch. It popped up out into short center field. McCall's going back underneath it and calls for it and takes it for out number three. And that's all for Gibson. And that's all for the Cardinals here in the bottom half of this inning. So the score after five for the Detroit, nothing in the Cardinals, nothing. Well, two great pitchers tied up against each other. Here's Bush Memorial Stadium in St. Louis in the seventh game of the World Series. Detroit threw five innings, no runs, one hit, no errors. Cardinals, no runs, two hits, and no errors. Gibson pitching for the world champion Cardinals, Mickey Lolich. The pitcher for the American League champion, Detroit Tigers. Now Gibson ready to face Tigers third baseman Don Wirt. And back to the mic comes Pee Wee Reed. Thank you, Ernie. Don Wirt struck out his first time up. There's a ball popped up out into center field. Kurt Fred will have no trouble with it. Underneath it. And takes it for out number one. That's four straight men. Gonna hit the ball in the air. Martin, Martin, and work. That brings up Mickey Lowe. He gets the nice hand. And this game is moving right along. We're already in the top half of the sixth inning. First hit to strike the Lowe. The wind up, the kick. Ball hit hard. How the air. Catches it. On one up, flips the ball over to Cepeda. So it's two up and two down. Ball well, hit on one hop to Javier, and he caught a little bit like a football. But he was just trying to block it. That's what he did. He knew he had plenty of time, but Lowe is running. That brings up Dick McCall. And it's two away. Scala pops up to the first baseman. Flat out to Roger Maris in right field. The first pitch to him. A curveball in there for call strike one. And this gets to this shot. He has already struck out six men. McAuliffe with that wide open stance of his. That weight on his back foot. Fastball a little bit too low. Ball one. The Tigers have one hit by Stanley. The Cardinals have two. One by Flood. And one by Tim McCarver. And we're already in the sixth inning. It has been pitching today. Gibson, fastball. Outside, ball two. McAuliffe has one home run in the series. Three runs batted in. Two balls, one strike. Here's the kick, the pitch. Hit him on the foot. Gibson retrieves the ball. Flips the ball over to the first base umpire. Jim Honachick said it's all right. Got two and two on Dick McAuliffe. Two away. Gibson on that rubber. He's always ready. McCarver giving the sign. Here's the wind up the kick. A curveball hit out into center field. Kurt Flood underneath it. And takes it to the third out. That's off of the call up and off of the Tigers here in the top half of the sixth inning. The score. Five and a half innings of play is still to try nothing and the Cardinals nothing. Back. Well, Bob Gibson has uh, been fabulous for his pitching. The Tigers have hit only two balls on the ground. 
Cash grounded the third of the fourth inning. Lolich grounded the second of the sixth. They have only one hit. Lolich has been just about as sharp. He's allowed a single to Flood and a single to McCarver. The game is scoreless going to the last half of the sixth inning. The Cardinals at bat. And here's Mr. Reese again. Thank you, Ernie. Lou Brock leading things off the Cardinals about a half to six inning. He's 0 for 2. Granted out to McAuliffe. Both times up today. Outside ball one. Brock. Made a bluff like he was going to punt. We have not seen him run in this series. They say he does not punt too much. He's had three doubles, one triple, two home runs, five runs better than this series. That's pretty good. Curveball outside. Ball two. And he has seven stolen bases. Brock checks with his coach, Joe Schultz, down at third base. And they would like to get this man on the base. He seems to get a ball club moving. The count is two balls and no strikes. Here's the pitch. Base hit out in the left field. Brock on there, you see some action. 
first flood. He has one base hit today. Here's the pitch to him. Fastball on inside, ball one. Flood now seven for 26 in the series. Count of one ball and no strikes on him. Lowell the big lineup. Here's the kick. Foul off the left. One ball and one strike. The seventh game and the final game of the 1968 World Series. There is no tomorrow. Both pitchers, Lowell and Gibson, have one, two. Looking for their third game. A one and one pitch to Flood. Checks, he swings inside. Two balls and one strike on Kurt Flood. Ernie Harwell and Aaron Pee Wee Reese here at Bush Stadium. A beautiful day in St. Louis. We had rain yesterday. But we couldn't ask for a nicer day today. Two balls, one strike. The kick's the pitch. Ground ball out to shortstop. Stanley, he's up with the ball. He'll have to hurry, and they didn't get him. Better known as Stockton. He is the cheerleader for this Cardinals ball club. Here's the hitter. It's two away. Kurt Flood on at first base with his second hit of the day. He stole a base in the first inning. Two away. Lowell is taking a little time. He is ready now. Looks over at Flood at first. Here's the pitch. Curveball inside. Ball one. Cepeda has two home runs in the series. Six runs batted in. One ball, no strike on him. Lodi takes a look at Flood, who does not have too much of a lead. There's a curveball in there for call strike one. They play Cepeda straight away. And deep. Cepeda hits a lot of balls hard in the right center field. One ball, one strike on Cepeda. On at first base, Kurt Flood. There goes Flood, and he picked him off at first. Juan Cash running down to Dick McAuliffe. Now that McAuliffe is running him back to Mickey Lowell. Mickey Lowell has the ball. He's running him back to Stanley. Stanley is now running Flood down and takes it. He's out of play, went. One, the three, the four, the one, the six, and they finally wrapped him down there. And that's all for the Cardinals here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. So the score after six full innings, the Tigers still nothing and the Cardinals nothing. rain yesterday, but we couldn't ask for a nicer day today. Two balls, one strike. The kick, the pitch. Ground ball out to shortstop. Stanley, he's up with the ball. He'll have to hurry, and he didn't get him. Better known as Stockton. He is the cheerleader for this Cardinals ball club. Here's the hitter. It's two away. Kurt Flood on at first base with his second hit of the day. He stole a base in the first inning. Two away. Lowell is taking a little time. He is ready now. Looks over at Flood at first. Here's the pitch. Curveball inside. Ball one. Nice. 
Cepeda has two home runs in the series. Six runs batted in. One ball, no strike on him. Lowly takes a look at Flood, who does not have too much of a lead. There's a curveball in there for call strike one. They play Cepeda straight away. And deep. Cepeda hits a lot of balls hard in the right center field. One ball, one strike on Cepeda. On his first base, Kurt Flood. There it goes Flood, and he picked him off at first. Juan Pace running down to Dick McAuliffe. Now that McAuliffe is running him back to Mickey Lowish. Mickey Lowish has the ball. He's running him back to Stanley. Stanley is now running Flood down and takes it. He's out of play, Wimp. One to three to four to one to six, and they finally trapped him down there. And that's all for the Cardinals here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. So the score after six full innings, the Tigers still nothing and the Cardinals nothing. The Tigers no runs on one hit, the Cardinals no runs on four hits. And to tell you all about it, the side kick, Ernie Harbaugh. Come on in, Ernie. Thank you, Pee Wee. Stanley takes the curve from Gibson for strike as the seventh inning gets underway. The score is high. Stanley has the only Tiger hit off Bob Gibson at a single in the fourth inning. He takes the ball wide. One and one, the count on Mickey. Uh, Brock has tied a series record by hitting safely in every game of a seven-game series. And done uh, many times uh, previous to this series. The wind up and the pitch. Hung on and pop foul back of the plate. It'll be out of play. The Tigers have had only one runner on the bases against the great Bob Gibson this afternoon. That was Stanley, who had a single, an infield hit to the shortstop in the fourth with one man out. But the Cardinals have four hits off Lodich, and they've all been singles. A brilliant duel between two great pitchers. Scoreless tie, seventh inning, the pitch. Curveball, hit on the line, drive, foul over the head of Cepeda. He almost had a shot at that ball, but it was over his head, and he leaped and couldn't reach it. It went into foul territory. A check swing by Stanley. This is the closest uh, game the two teams have played so far. In all the other games, one of the teams got out in front rather early. The first game of the series, the Cardinals got three in the fourth. That was the latest that went score. Here's a strike called. A big fat ball flips the outside corner. And Gibson uh, gets another strikeout. That's number seven. He had not had one since Kaline struck out in the fourth inning. And here is K-Line up again. The Tigers hitting hero in this series, but he's 0 for 2 against Gibson today, both on strikeout. Bounding ball to third. Grabbed by Shannon. They throw the first, the rather easy out. Shannon shoots the fader. K-Line retired. Two down, nobody on. Game scoreless from the Tigers' seventh inning, and here is Norman Cash. Cash has flied to right and bounced to third. Tigers have hit only three ground balls. Two to Shannon. One to Javier. Norman Cash, the Texan. Facing Bob Gibson. Two out, nobody on. He takes a ball high. Ball one. Now the windup by the Cardinal right hand of the pitch is cut on and missed. There's a fast ball that he blew right through there. One and one, the count on Cash. Two out. Nobody on. This is the type of game that can explode on any pitch. Gibson is set down ten in a row. The one one pitch. Cash takes the ball, checks his swing on an outside fastball. Two and one, the count on Norman. Outfield deep to right, the infield back with two out, the base is empty. Gibson checking his time with Ketchum McCarver. Scoreless tie, it's the seventh inning. For the wind up, the pitch to Cash. He takes the curve across. 
two. Changed up and got his serve over. Not only did he get it over, he got it in a good spot, and he just on that outside corner. Cash thought it missed. Uh, I don't believe Gibson saw me serve as much as he did in the uh, first game. Here's the pitch. Here's the curve. It's low. Full count on Norman Cash. Two out, nobody on, no score, seventh inning, Tigers at bat. Game of the World Series. Now the windup and the pitch. Swing, there's a looping drive to right. It'll drop in for a single by Cash. Fielded by Roger Maris, the Cardinal right fielder. And Cash has hit number two. Off Mark Gibson. Each of the hits has been a single. Here's Willie Horton, who has struck out and popped the second base. Cash is only the second man to reach base against the fine pitching of Bob Gibson. And the pitch and mount here as the game moves into the late innings in St. Louis. Two out and one on. Ground ball, left side, two, base hit. Paul Horton, Cash, Dixon, and holds it second. And the Tigers, for the first time, have two men on base. For the first time, they've moved the man past first. That is the third hit, a ground ball single between Shannon and Maxwell. And Jim Northrup comes to bat now against Gibson. Now this is the only real scoring threat the Tigers have mounted against Gibson. Previous to this inning, Stanley had a single. He'd been the only runner. Now it's Cash at second. Willie Hawks at first base. Game tied in the seventh. Time call by the Cardinal catcher McCarver. He goes out to talk to Gibson. Ernie Mabry, Jim McCarver, or Bob Gibson may have heard Frank Blair on the Today Show this morning when he said the NBC computer said that Jim Northup would hit a home run with two men on today. <laughs> Maybe they better walk and said, let's uh, strike out that computer. Eh? <laughs> now the set by Gibson, we're ready. There's a swing and a high ball to center. Here comes Clark taking hard. He almost fell out. It's over his head for the hit. Cash is rounding third. He scores. Willie Horton rounding third. He scores. Northup goes into first base. The court speed two to nothing. the one that breaks it open, Pee-wee. Yeah, it looked like Kurt Blood. He saws in on that ball, then he saw that the ball was hit harder than he thought it was. He tried to break back. He slipped on it, and then could not catch up to the ball. It's a three-bagger, and the Tigers lead two to nothing in the seventh. Freehand takes the curve from Gibson. Ball one with two outs, singles by Cash and Horton. And then a fly to deep center over the head of Flood for three bases. That came off the bat of Northrop. Here's the strike. The breaking ball in the inside corner. One and one. So Detroit broke on the scoreless tie to go ahead. Two nothing in the seventh. Man on third, two out. Freehand takes the fastball. Low and away. Two balls, one strike. North of third base, the infield laying back down, and the outfield straight away on freehand. Gibson winds and pitches. Swing and a miss on a fastball. Two to the count on freehand. Check of the sign by Gibson. It's the 2 2 pitch. Swing, there's a line drive, left to the field, coming hard is Brock, he can't get it. He bounds away from him, freehand going for two, north of his scored, and freehand goes in, standing in second. Three nothing to choice. That is a two-base hit for freehand. Brock, the left fielder, charged the ball. He managed to almost short hop it, but it bounded away from him. North of scored easily, and freehand takes a double. And the Detroit Tigers lead three to nothing in the seventh.
The batter will be worse, and they'll put him on with first base open, and two out, and the pitch will hold it due to that next. Word is getting an intentional walk here in the seventh inning situation. And he tosses the bat away and tops on down the first base. That is the first walk off Gibson. It's an intentional pass. So Detroit with a 3 nothing lead now. As Freehand at second, word at first base from the seventh inning, they're two out of the picture, Lola should bat. He swings and fouls in into the Cardinal dugout. Lola is struck out and bounced to second. The Tigers exploded here in the seventh with two away. Singles by Cash and Horton, a three bagger by Northrop, and a double by Freehand. Detroit with a 3 0 lead now. As Freehand at second, word at first base from the seventh inning, they're two out of the picture, Lola should bat. He swings and fouls in into the Cardinal dugout. Lolich is struck out and bounced to second. The Tigers exploded here in the seventh with two away. Singles by Cash and Horton, a three bagger by Northrop, and a double by Freehand. There's a cut and a miss on a breaking ball. Strike two on Lolich. Gibson trying to hold him off now. The Tigers have scored three times. He sets and pitches. Here's a strike call. Struck him out at the strike out for Gibson. At the end of six and one half innings, Detroit three, St. Louis nothing. Well, Bob Gibson was just feeling right along, honey. But he ran in a little trouble after the two outs and top half the seventh inning. He gets struck out, Mickey Stanley, then Kaline grounded out to third. Looked like an easy inning. Then Cash got a base hit. Martin followed with one in the left. Then on a ball hit out to center field that first slug came in on just a little bit. Then saw was hit hard and tried to go back. Swift could not catch up with it. And Martha batted in two runs. Then Freehan hit a double for the three runs. The Tigers now lead three to nothing. Going in the bottom half of the seventh inning. And Orlando Cepeda, the first hitter, Ernie. Orlando steps in. He walked in the first inning. And then he grounded out to Don Worth, the Tiger third baseman in the fourth. So officially, he is 0 for 1 in this afternoon's game. Mickey Lodic, the Detroit left-hander, delivers, and Cepeda fouls it off out of play. Strike one on Cepeda. Outfield deep, the infield back. The outfield straight away on him. Checking his sign. The left hander kicks and deals. The Peter swings and misses on a high, hard one. Strike two, the count on him. Works uh, deep at third base. Stanley over into the hole at shortstop now on Cepeda. The wind up by Lotus. The strike two pitch is a ball. He checks his swing on a let up curve. One ball, two strikes. Cash playing at first base. McCarthy at second. Stanley at short. Word at third. In the outfield, the Tigers have Horton left. North and center. K line the right fielder. Well, the catcher free hand and the pitcher Mickey Lovitz. Now the one two pitch is due to Cepeda. Watch out. He backs him away. Two two. High and in close. After Cepeda, it'll be Shannon and then McCarver. Detroit leads 3 0 in the last half of the seventh here in St. Louis in the seventh game of the World Series. Here's the pitch. Up in out. Swing and miss. It's the third strikeout by Lovitz. The next Cardinal batter will be Mike Shannon. He has tried to right and fanned. Nobody on. Uh, Lovitz is taking a little more time than he did earlier. Kicks and kneels and Shannon hits a ground foul past third base. Ball it sharply but pulled too much. Strike one.
Three runs, five hits, no errors for Detroit. St. Louis, no runs, four hits, and no errors. The Cardinals are batting in the seventh with one out. Here's the ball high. Hands up on the bat as if he might try to buck the ball. Work was laying back. And the batter, Shannon, then did not offer on the pitch from Lovett. Stanley moving a little over the glove side at shortstop. Here's the windup, the pitch. It's a high one, two and one. McCarver waiting at the on deck circle for St. Louis. Tigers ahead, three to nothing over the Cardinals in the seventh. Now the two one delivery. He takes the curve for a strike. Two two, the count on Shannon. This fan right at the go on the 2 2 delivery. Gannon backs off from a high, tight one, 3 2. Pee Wee is, in my imagination, is he taking more time out there, Lolich? I think he is. Of course, uh, Lolich pitching with two days rest. Throwing quite a few balls. He could be a little bit tired. Maybe he's just uh, resting a little bit between pitches. Gannon waits now on the 3 2 delivery. Swung on is a fly ball to left center, not very deep. Horton and North are coming after it. Both are there. to Northrop, allowing Shannon to reach second base. Northrop and Horton converged on the fly ball to the short back center. Neither one uh, waved the other one off. They had a very near collision. Northrop managed to get his glove on the ball, and then it squirted away. Shannon able to take second base on the error, and here is McCarver batting. He's had a walk and a single. He's been on base each of his two trips. this game. Here's the pitch. Swing is a fly ball to the right. Not very deep. K-Line has the range of it. Makes the catch in right field. The throw comes into Stanley and Cannon gets back to second. That was pretty close. Stanley grabbed the ball and almost uh, ran him back. Ernie, we've heard about K-Line. Fire with the bat. His face running. He could do it all. You just saw his arm right there. Shannon made a bluff like he was going to third. He didn't have any idea of going, but that ball was far to Stanley, and Stanley almost picked him off a second. Caitlin has one of the great arms in baseball. Here's Roger Maris. Man on second. Two out. Cardinals batting. The Tigers lead 3-0 in the last half of the seventh inning. Maris has hit into a double play and struck out swinging against the Tiger pitch a little bit. Miss on a curve. Strike one on Roger Maris. Schofield running uh, down toward the Cardinal bullpen. Goes through the door and just appears behind the fence. We don't have the vision on the bullpen here in this park. Strike one count on Maris. Man on second. Two out. Here's a pop up. Into the middle of the diamond, Stanley, the shortstop, calling for it. He makes the catch, and that's all for the Cardinal. And at the end of seven, it is Detroit. Three and St. Louis nothing. Here's Dick McCullough for lead off for Detroit. Detroit ahead, three nothing in the eighth. Gibson delivers, and it's a ball outside on McCullough, a fastball. The Tigers with two out in the seventh, scored three times. Singles by Cash and Horton, a triple by Northrop, and a double by Freehand. Is a bombing ball on the right side of the infield. Javier makes a good stop, throws over to Cepeda, and McCollum is out. 
One up and one away for the Detroit is in their eighth inning. The batter will be Mickey Stanley, who has mind of the pitcher Gibson, single to the shortstop deep, and taken a call third strike. Detroit three, St. Louis nothing in the eighth. Gibson ready to go to work. Swing, a bounding ball to short. Maxwell charges, grabs it, throws to Peta. He got him by three steps. Two up and two away in the Detroit eighth inning. And the batter will be Al Kaline, who has failed to hit in this game. He struck out twice, bounced to third. Swing, there's a line shot grabbed by the second baseman, Javier, to end the inning. And at the end of seven and one-half innings in St. Louis, Detroit three, the Cardinals nothing. with Jim Simpson, since Ernie Harwell has gone downstairs in case the Tigers win this game. We'll have a little post-game ceremony. So it's a pleasure having Mr. Simpson to come in here and work with in his last few innings. So in about a half the eighth inning, the first hitter, the pinch hitter, Phil Gagliano. Come on in, Jim. Thank you, Pee-wee, very much. Here's Gagliano, 0 for 2 in the series. As Red Shandians goes to the bench in an effort to get some runs. He trails 3 nothing. Gagliano takes the first pitch from Lolich in an attempt to win his third game of this series. It is low ball one. The Cardinals had a great opportunity to score in the sixth inning when they got two hits, but two men were thrown out stealing. The third out was a line drive to the shortstop. Ground ball, champ for Ward, backs on the ball, has it at third base, throws high, but Cash has it for the first out of the Cardinals' eight. Bob Gibson will bat for himself, and listen to this ovation. who has struck out eight, but as of this moment is failing in his attempt to win his eighth consecutive World Series complete game, stands in to bat for himself. He's ran about and popped up. Lolich's well, first pitch, swung on and fouled of the screen, strike one. Lolich, well, of course, is working with two days rest, a 17-game winner during the regular season, and now in an effort to win his third World Series game and the series for the Tigers. Three to nothing in the last of the eighth with one out and none on. Lolich again ready. Three quarters delivery, punted foul down toward the third base coach's box where Joe Schultz picks it up. It's strike two to Gibson. Temperature today about 60 degrees, a perfect day after the rain of yesterday and the rain of Sunday in Detroit for the seventh and conclusive game of the 1968 World Series. Gibson back in the box with a count of two strikes. Well, it's ready now, looking into Bill Freehand for the side. Two strike pitch, fouled off and back over the screen below. Still two strikes. Tigers got their runs with two out on the seventh. Cash singled, Horton singled him down to second. North of it, a ball to straightaway center field. Flood broke in, then went back, flipped it, went over his head for a triple, and Freehand doubled him in. And it's 3 nothing. Rolich ready again. Low pitch. Gibson went part the way around, but plate umpire Tom Gorman says not all the way. It's ball one. One and two. In that seventh inning, the Tigers sent to bat against Bob Gibson eight men. Rolich ready again. And over the top, it is fouled off the end of the bat of Gibson, and the count remains is one and two. Pee-wee, we had some high-scoring games throughout this series, but when they talk about the series, I'm sure they're going to talk about this seventh game. You've seen some kind of pitching in this game. Lowley's got off to a little bad start. Looked like he may have a little trouble, but he has settled down and pitched great ball. And, of course, Gibson had no trouble at all until the seventh inning. Bought him through the count. Gibson, of course, admitted he was tired, as is Lowley. The Tigers, to me, look like they're swinging the bat a little bit better against Gibson today. Swinging a miss by Gibson. And there is the fourth strikeout for Lonitz in the second out of the eighth inning. And that will bring up Lou Brock. Brock has more hits than anybody else in the series, 13, and of course he's stolen seven bases. But you'll recall the last 
time to the required this deal in series play since reaching the mark of seven. He has been thrown out. Today is ground up to second twice. With work drawn in on a 2 0 pitch in the 60s, Jingles passed him, but then was thrown out in a sense of steal. Lolich throwing to Cash to Stanley, who put it on. Two out on the eighth, three to nothing to score. Lolich ready to work to Brock. Breaking pitch off the corner, ball one. Danny Harwell has been working the games of Pee Wee, now in the Detroit dressing room in case the Tigers win. And Jack Buck, who worked the games in Detroit, is in the St. Louis dressing room in case the Cardinals come back. A low pitch, 2 0 now to Brock. Backdown looks down to Schultz at third base. Out here, 54,692. That's been the mark in every game. The Cardinals have won eight World Series and lost three. Two and zero, and Buck stands there and watches it sail low, and it's three and zero. Two out, Buck the batter, and Lolich, who now stands with his hands on his hips and looks out towards center field, as a count of three and zero on Lou Brock. Mickey now ready, staring in at Brock, who has that closed stance. That boy stepped across the plate. He was taking all the way, and it's outside and high. Ball four, and the dangerous Lou Brock is at first base with two outs. That's the third walk given up by Lolich, and the first since the second inning, and here comes Mayo Smith. It could be, Pee Wee, that Lolich is tired and has said something between innings, or it could be that... Mayo is simply coming out to calm him down and remind him that he has two out with Brock at first. Three runs on five hits, one error for Detroit. No run, four hits, no errors for the Cardinals. But then I was just wondering, I uh, heard Denny McLean ask the question yesterday that if Mayo Smith needs you tomorrow, of course, we know he's not going to take out Lowell's right now, but he wanted to talk to him, kind of slowing down, as you said, but I was wondering if Denny McLean will be used in this ball game if Lola's is taken out. I wouldn't be uh, too much surprised to see Denny McLean coming to this ball game. McLean, the winner yesterday at Star Seaweed, did not have to throw that hard as a result of the two runs in the second and the ten in the third. And therefore was not worked too hard, although he went to throw nine. Now we have two outs. We'll keep an eye on Brock at first base. Three to nothing to score Detroit. We're in the last of the eighth inning. And Julio Javier is the batter. 0 for 3 on the day. Bunts the ball. Ward picks it up on one hop, fires on the first base, and has it for the third out. No runs, no hits, no errors, and at the end of eight, Detroit three, St. Louis nothing. By right going the top half of the ninth inning, you know these Tigers are happy. Even Norm Cash listens to the music, and he comes up to home plate, kind of doing a little jig. They're leading this ball game by a score of three to nothing. Norm Cash, Willie Hartman, and Jim Nossett. Here in the top of the ninth inning, the face gets in to tell you all about it, Jim Simpson. All right, Pee Wee, Ducky Schofield has gone in a shortstop. Remember, Maxville was battered for. Cash cuts on the first ball, hits it very high. Maris is waiting in right field, now trots in a few steps and has it for the first out of the Tigers' ninth. That will bring up Willie Horton. I didn't even get a chance to tell you. In the seventh, with two out, it was Cash who singled to right, and Horton, whose two out single, kept the drive alive and set up the triple over the head of Flood by Jim Northrup. One out on the ninth. And the Tigers right now have a 3 nothing lead. Gibson working, breaking ball, late down the line in left field over quickly is Brock. Horton goes around first base and will stay right there. And that is the sixth hit of Bob Gibson. Jim looks to me like they're going to put a runner in for Willie Hart. And I see Mayo Smith at the top of the dugout there. Signaling down to the bullpen. He wants a runner. And it could be for Willie Hart. And if that happens, apparently Northrop, as has happened in other series games, Pee Wee will move from center to left. Stanley will go from short to center, and they'll bring in Ray Euler for defensive purposes. It looks like Dick Trzuski coming in. There's Willie Hart leaving first base. And I believe it is. Here comes Dick Trzuski going over to talk to his manager. Mayo Smith, he's getting himself a helmet. So it'll be Dick Trzuski running for Willie Hart. And as Jim told you, Nossip will probably move over to left. Mickey Stanley, the shortstop, will move out in the center field. And maybe Trzuski will just stay in at the game and play shortstop. Especially since he is battle-tested in series play, Pee Wee. If you would like to look ahead to the last of the night, 
And the last chance for the St. Louis Cardinals, Flood, Trepater, and Shannon, the listed batter. Here is Northrop, whose triple drove in the first two runs. He later scored himself. And this 3-0 ball game takes the breaking pitch from Bob Gibson. It's low ball one. Krasuski running for Horton, who got a second hit of the day as at first base. One out in the ninth. Gibson ready again. Half check swing by Northrop. It's fouled off to the left. It is one and one. The crowd here of nearly 55,000 just bursting to cut loose if the Tigers can come back. But right now, Bob Gibson trailing three to nothing is trying to set down the Tigers in the ninth. One one pitch from Gibson. Fastball low. It is two and one. Northrop with the grand slam yesterday has also hit another home run, and it was off Bob Gibson back in Detroit. Ground ball up the middle. Gets under Schofield and digging around first and going around the second and going for third is Suzuki. They're then on first and third, and with one out, the Tigers again come alive. And that's the second hit of this game for Northrop. And that will bring up Bill Freehan, who went 0 for 16 before getting a single yesterday. Today, he has a double to drive in the third run of this game. And with one up, men at first and third, Freehan is up. And let me tell you that Bill has hit the ball very well today. He has lined out the flood in center and sent Brock deep in left and then double to left. He's been swinging the bat very well. Gibson ready and throws fastball. Cut on. Off first base in foul territory. A high pop to Tater there and now has it for the second out of the ninth. <laughs> And that will bring up third baseman Don Worth. Worth today struck out on three pitches in the third, fly to center in the sixth, and was put on intentionally in the seventh before Lolich struck out to end that big uprising in which the Tigers had four runs and, or rather, four hits and scored all three runs. Ball hit up the center. This will drive another run in. Starts around second, but will stop there and work. Drives in a run with a sharp single to center on the first pitch from Bob Gibson. It is four to nothing. Detroit in the ninth. And that will give Mickey Lolich a chance for an ovation from this crowd here at Bush Stadium. Shut out the Cardinals thus far, giving up only four hits. It's the first pitch high in the air. Drifting back is Javier from second base and should have it for the third out. But the Tigers score a run, and in the middle of the ninth, the score now is Detroit four and St. Louis nothing. Well, here are the changes. Nothing has moved over left, taking Willie Harden's place. Stanley from shortstop after center. And Ray Otter is now playing shots up for the Tigers. And some bottom half of the ninth inning. The Cardinals trail by a score of four to nothing. It's the last chance for the Cardinals. Kurt Flood is the first hitter. And now Jim steps in. Thank you, Pee-wee. As Flood steps in, he has two hits today, has stolen a base, and has been picked off in an attempt to steal a base. Well, it's ready. He's got all the way, and there's strike one. Gloves to Peter and Shannon. Bob Gibson, apparently, having failed in his attempt to win eight consecutive and complete games, but this game is not over yet, and like the Tigers, the Cardinals are explosive. Offbeat pitch, strike two to Flood. Third was taking all away. Four runs, eight hits, one error for Detroit, no runs, four hits, no errors for the Cardinals. Defensively, trying to stop the Cardinals, Wirt at third, Euler at short, McAuliffe at second, Cash at first, Northrop at left, Stanley in center, Kalon and right, free on the catcher. Lolich delivering. Foul tipped on the swing, and it's still two strikes. Ernie Harwell has been with you along with Pee Wee all through this ball game, and all games from here in St. Louis at the moment is in the Detroit dressing room. In the event, and right now it seems a likely one, that the Tigers win the series. But the Cardinals still have their say. Lolich ready for the two strike pitch. Offbeat pitch, but it's low, and it's one and two. The day has been perfect for this seventh consecutive, or rather seventh game of the World Series. And the game has been perfect, unless you're a Cardinal fan. Tight pitching. Nobody scored until the seventh inning. Gibson and Rolich in a duel all the way. Neither has been replaced. 
One two pitch. Line drive grabbed by Holler at shortstop. One out. Holler raced to his right. The drive seemed to sink, and he stuck up his glove and had it. And here is Orlando Cepeda. Cepeda has walked. Worth made a fine play in his ground ball in the fourth, and he struck out swinging on a 2-2 pitch in the seventh. And while at bat, back in the fourth, Cepeda pulled one deep and foul to the left, and then pushed one deep and foul to the right. He had good wood on the ball. The Tigers right now two outs away from this World Series victory. High in the air on the first pitch, perhaps playable. Freehand comes off the back. Word is in. Freehand says he's got it. Two out on the ninth. with two outs, some of the fans here in Bush Stadium in St. Louis feel that the Tigers have it wrapped up. They're beginning to leave Pee Wee, but here comes Mike Shannon. And in the excitement of this ball game, if Shannon does not get on, let us pay tribute to one man, whom we have seen apparently back for the last time in baseball, Roger Maris, who's listed a couple of batters away from Shannon. Roger is retiring after today's game. He may yet get the bat. Here is Shannon, fly to right, struck out swinging, and reached on an error when Northrop and Horton nearly collided in the seventh inning in left center field. Lolich ready, fires low, ball one. Four runs on eight hits, one error for Detroit, the big blow. Northrop triple over the head of flood in center field in the seventh. No run, four hits, no errors for the Cardinals. Bob Gibson has given up one run in the prior two games to this, has given up four. Up high with the pitch, it is 2-0. Many of the Tigers are along the front step of their dugout. Staring out at Lovitch, who is working with two days rest. Good old pitch from Mickey. Catches the corner. Strike one. Two and one. Mickey has slowed down Pee Wee in his delivery. But nevertheless, as he has slowed down, he continues to throw hard. I was thinking the same thing in the ninth inning. He came right out and took charge. He is throwing as hard right now as he has all day. Run one pitch, long drive left field. Back toward the wall goes Northrop looking up at the base. It is over the wall. Home run. Four to one, Detroit. And Mike Shannon on a 2 1 pitch drilled it over the wall in left field, and it is 4 to 1, two out in the ninth. And the Cardinals still alive with catcher Jim McCarver, the batter. He is 1 for 2 on the day, he is also 1. Maris is on deck. Lowlich is a left handed pitcher, and McCarver and Maris are both left handed batters. However, the word is that McCarver can hit the left handed pitching. Cardinal catcher waits. Lowlich fires, ball is hit high in the air. This should be the series. Freehand waving everybody away in foul territory. Detroit wins. Lowlich is being mobbed at home plate. The Detroit Tigers, down three games to one, came back and have won it, something only two other teams have ever done. Pittsburgh over Washington in 1925, and the Yankees over the Braves in 1958. And now the Tigers have done it over the defending world champion St. Louis Cardinals. Down three games to one. They have taken three in a row with Lowlich today winning his third. Denny McLean won the fourth game yesterday. The final score, Detroit 4, St. Louis 1. Well, see we reach. This is the third time in history it's been done. A lot of folks thought the Detroit Tigers were through, but they really have come back and have taken this 1968 World Series. Well, I would think so. After seeing Rollins last came over in Detroit, after the Cardinals were leading the series by three games to one, they, the Cardinals got three runs in that first inning. It looked like it was just a matter of time and just how much the Cardinals would beat them by, but he settled down and came back and pitched a great ball game and won it five to three. It's the Detroit Ball Club, and so do the Cardinals. They both deserve a lot of credit 
Bob Gibson pitched great ball today, but he looks like he may have gotten a little tired in the seventh inning, and the Tigers finally got to him, scoring three runs there after two men were out, and they scored one run in the ninth inning. Mickey Lowe is pitching with two days rest. Didn't look to me like he was too tired, Jim. <laughs> he sure didn't. We might also point out to you that in the sixth inning, the Cardinals had a great chance to score, had two base hits. Now in the dressing room, Bunny Harwell with Mickey Lowlitz. Here is his third victory. Mickey Lowlitz and Mickey, it has been fantastic what you have done. Thank you, Ernie. Thank you very much. I really don't have too much to say right now. I really don't. Did you feel very tired? Did you feel like that you might be uh, losing your stuff toward the late innings? I never got tired in a game. I, I was weak almost from about the third inning on. I didn't have the real good, hard fastball that I do know how to throw. As you notice, most of the balls today were hit on the ground. I was throwing a sinking fastball all day. I didn't have a good hard fastball. I had uh, fairly good control, not as good as I usually like. But uh, I kept making the ball sink, and I got him out. But the fact that you were tired helped that ball sink a little more, you think? Right, it helped a lot. By being tired, it causes the ball to sink more. Now, what about uh, you had a little conference on the mound right at the end? Did Mayo come out and ask if you had enough gas left to go or what? No, he says he just wanted to slow me down. He says he thought maybe I was getting too excited out there about, you know, mm -hmm. having us so close to coming to the end. He says, I want you to take it easy, relax, and throw like you've been throwing all day. All right. Well, thank you, Mickey. It was a great performance, and have a very nice, quiet winter. The final score, Detroit 4, St. Louis 1.